Hello, Miss Pneumatic here. Today I'm going to explain pneumatics. From the basic principles to the structures and operating mechanisms of each step and component of a pneumatic system in an easy to understand way. Now, let's get started with the basics of pneumatics and pneumatic systems part 1. What is pneumatics? It is the basic concept of this educational channel. As you might have guessed, it has to do with compressed air. But to be more specific, it refers to the science and technology of performing work using machinery with compressed air. To explain, you've all probably played with balloons at one time or another when you were young. When you blow air into a balloon and then release the opening, the air will escape and the balloon will quickly fly off. This provides insight into the basic principles of pneumatics. First, when you inhale air through your nose and mouth and then force it into a balloon, the air inside becomes compressed due to the elasticity of the rubber material, and this results in potential energy. Second, by keeping the opening closed with your fingers, you're storing the potential energy inside the balloon. Lastly, when you let go, the compressed air escapes from inside the balloon, and the potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy, which causes the balloon to move. In a pneumatic system, it's the air compressor that plays the role of the nose and mouth. So in the first step, the air compressor intakes the air in the surroundings and compresses it. Secondly, the air is stored in the air tank. Lastly, when force is needed for movement, the compressed air is conveyed toward the actuator via a pipe. With compressed air, it is possible to move mechanic components and operate machinery. Earlier, we learned how compressed air is created, based on our balloon example. Compressed air goes through several steps before it is used to move an object. And these steps occur in a system called a pneumatic system. In a pneumatic system, air is compressed and stored in what is called the air compression segment. Next, impurities are removed from the air. The pressure is adjusted and other conditions of the compressed air are adjusted in the air quality control segment. Then, the direction and speed of the air movement are controlled in the air control segment. Finally, the segment that moves an object is called the actuator segment. Now, let's learn more about the first step, involving the air compression segment. Air containing moisture, oil, dust, and other impurities is sucked into the system by an air compressor and it is compressed. The compressed air then enters an air tank where it is stored. This is the case in a system where the air compressor and air tank are connected together, but there are also cases where they are not connected. During the process of compressing air, heat is generated. As the heat is conveyed through a pipe, it cools down and this creates moisture in the air. The moisture is removed by an aftercooler and air dryer in the following step. The aftercooler removes moisture by cooling the air, while the air dryer removes moisture by drying the air. Then, air moves into the air quality control segment. The air quality control segment filters and adjusts the compressed air and adds lubricant for the actuator to work properly. Although the moisture in the air was removed in the air compression segment, there still remain many impurities in the air such as oil, dust, and residual moisture. Therefore, the air filter removes the impurities that weren't removed in the earlier steps. The reason the impurities are continually removed from the air is that when moisture and other impurities enter the system along with the air, the mechanical efficiency of the actuator and the lifetime of the machine will be reduced. By filtering out impurities several times, the efficiency of the components can be enhanced. Next, the air pressure is reduced by a regulator and the pressure is maintained constant at the output value. 
For example, if the pressure created by the air compressor was 5 kg of force per centimeter squared, it can be lowered to 3 kg of force per centimeter squared and kept constant by the regulator. A lubricator is a device that injects a lubricant into the air flowing through the system so that the actuator works smoothly. I advise that you use a lubricator to lubricate the parts, which will help boost durability. But it is optional, so there are cases where they are not used. I'll explain this in more detail in a video on lubricators. So in part 1, we learned about the principle of pneumatics as well as the air compression and air quality control segments of a pneumatic system. In part 2, I will go over the air control segment where the direction and volume of airflow are controlled, in the actuator segment and show you the actual system components. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now! Miss Pneumatic Channel is working together with KCC Precision.